thanks for being here. Uh, I hope I um, do justice to the title of the talk, right? Um, trustworthiness of AI is an important thing. I said it in the beginning, uh, in the keynote. Uh, I, I hope it is not a topic that needs too much motivation. Everybody of you can understand why AI is important, hopefully. If not, raise your hand, say something. Everybody can see that AI will be everywhere, pretty close to is everywhere. Um, everybody can understand why we need to trust AI. It's basically the similar thing that we had with software some 20 years ago. If we can't have a look into the software itself, how can we trust it? Yes, please. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. No worries. No worries. Just level setting. Don't expect too much from this presentation. Not that even the sound is working. <coughs> so um, I think I need to do some rules up front. A, even though I'm wearing a microphone, it's just for the public relations stuff. It looks cool. It's not really amplifying something in here. So uh, raise your hand if you can't hear me. I can talk very loud. I shout at people from time to time, especially Marcel, if they are asking questions. Uh, so uh, silly questions. So all the other questions are very much welcome. Um, don't read through my slides. I I've, I'm very old school. I have a lot of information on the slides. There's a lot of text on the slides. Don't do it. If you want to scan that QR code, um, go to the website of the conference. There's a link to the slides. Just go there. Don't do it now, by the way. Uh, don't read my slides. <laughs> So, uh, right, um, don't read it. I will not talk about myself. Uh, I'm, I'm involved in open source for quite some time, mostly on the good side, so doing community stuff, sometimes on the dark side, doing other stuff, um, like working for IBM or Red Hat or stuff like that. So don't worry about that. Today, I'm going to talk about AI. I think this persona right here, right now, is identifying with the trust the AI community. So that is our project where we try to push all that trustworthiness, all that explainability stuff. Um, next rule. Ah, there's no code in my uh, presentation. No single line of code. Don't expect any code here. I'm not going to do that. Uh, on the maybe last, last slide, on one of the reference slides, um, there's links to GitHub repositories. So the trusty AI community is very active in publishing tutorials and demos and explaining stuff like how do I get um, bias uh, information for my models. They are very active. Um, head over to these uh, repositories if you want to read code. And uh, code is most often a Jupyter notebook, which is explaining a lot to you and showing the code. Um, what else? Questions? Oh, right. Uh, I read on the internet, I don't know if you know that, that 86% uh, of um, participants in presentations think that interactive presentations are more valuable. Quote end. Uh, so be interactive. It's not on me, it's on you. Uh, so be interactive. Ask questions. I, I prepared stuff. I don't say this is how it is. Full stop. Ask questions. Questions? Marcel? Oh, good. Um, so, um, we have seen that uh, before, right? AI is everywhere. Um, it will be in your phone on the edge, uh, as somebody told us. Uh, it will be on the edge. It is processing your voice. It is processing your images. I've seen wonderful, um, I think it's uh, Samsung Android cameras, which do a lot of fancy AI stuff to your pictures. So uh, trustworthy AI, right? How can you trust the pictures if AI is processing the camera data first before you see it? Let's see. So AI is everywhere, influencing everything, uh, all of us at least, I guess. Um, so uh, the, the tiny edge devices, um, we talked about uh, the developers being influenced by AI, either because uh, AI is writing their code or their test cases or their automation or their YAML deployment files. I don't know if everybody will, if any of us will write YAML files in a few years. Somebody said Visual Code is going to do that. So it's everywhere. And it's getting more autonomous and, and more complex over time, right? So um, 
having that tiny AI in my mobile phone I talk to and tell it to um, um, uh, create an appointment with mo one of my colleagues, that's an AI. It's trying to understand my speech, trying to make sense out of it, which is kind of hard sometimes. Um, and then talking to a web service, which is for sure driven by AI, uh, trying to figure out if my colleague has a little bit of available time on his calendar trying to create an appointment. That is a lot of things. Um, and, and they are doing it on their own, right? So AI is getting more and more autonomous and more and more complex. Um, if you're going to look at the cars, has, hasn't the vehicle talk been in here before? I don't know, but I think so. Uh, so if you're... Y you were talking about that? No, uh, but, but it's true. So um, if you're looking at cars, also, there's a lot of complex systems in there. If they are not uh, driven by AI, for sure they are complex. But now we're going to put AI into these cars, and it's more and more and more complex and more and more autonomous. Uh, not talking about drones here, not talking about uh, algorithms making decisions on the financial markets, not talking about healthcare systems and all that stuff. It's not, it's not good. All of these systems... Um, <laughs> might create unintended consequences, right? So um, identifying my voice on my phone might not be that much critical, or maybe just to me. Um, but uh, really making decisions to sell a lot of stocks on, on a stock market might have unintended consequences that we didn't see before. Or it has consequences that are not in our domain of control. So other people react on our actions. So it might be very, very complicated. If you mix that with uh, bias or with uh, privacy concerns, if you mix that with bad data that you have used to teach your machine learning model, eh, it's, not getting, I it's, it's getting not only unintended, maybe it's getting very complex and maybe it's getting very chaotic in the sense of we can't predict what's happening. So how, how do we do that? How do we predict something in this um, chaotic uh, world? Mm, that's my short motivation for, for all that trustworthiness guardrails. So we want these machines to, to prevent harm from us, obviously. Uh, I don't know if you know these robotic laws. Um, there's something like uh, the, the, f the first or maybe the second. Anyway, uh, robotos are supposed to not uh, do harm to, m to humans. Uh, that is something that we can translate one-on-one -on -one to the AI world. In the best case, hopefully, AI is not doing any harm to us. Let's, let's stray for that. Uh, that is something um, that, that we need to make sure. Um, by the way, um, maybe somebody can l have a look at it, but I'm, I'm not using the word delve in, in my presentation, which is a good sign. Um <laughs> Uh, ensuring fairness is another thing, right? Um, it's easy to imagine that uh, a credit approval by a bank is very much depending on a few key aspects, right? The income of the person applying for the credit. Uh, maybe the gender, maybe the color of the hair, maybe the job, maybe this and that and this and that. So making sure that the machine learning algorithms are fair whatever comes in should be processed in a fair way, is another very important thing that we need to take care of in the age of AI. Um, same for transparency. I said that before, the systems are getting complexer. Um, so how, how can we ensure transparency? Uh, with open source, we have done that for uh, the past 25, 30 years. We try to create transparency into all these mm, close to mission critical software components, right? I don't know if you've seen some people on uh, GitHub have that wonderful my software flight to Mars badge or something like that. Oh, you, you got it? <laughs> nice. <laughs> so his software is flying to Mars or is at Mars right now. Um, how did it come to that point? I mean, you're writing good software, so it's good. That, well, he's writing software, so it's good to have it on Mars. So I'm super pretty sure that NASA figured out this software is okay for us to go to Mars. I mean, they invest a little bit of money to do that, blah, 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 blah. But the important point here is they had the opportunity, the possibility to look into that software. Transparency is key. 
we need to promote that. Uh, AI models need to be open. Um, um, th th they need to be, uh, r what do you call it? If you have a look at it and uh, figure out it's good. Uh, anyway, they, they have to be open so that we can really figure out how do we do, how do they do, the, the machine learning models, how do they do uh, decisions? How, do, how have they come to a decision? Yes? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, so there was a question from the audience. Um, training models cost a lot of money, right? Machine learning model, training machine learning models cost a lot of money. So uh, how, how, how can we, do you, do you consider the open source software communities as us? So how, how can we maybe support that so that we can create more open models? That's a good repeat. Yeah. Do we do we have an organization to do so? I I don't know uh, actually. Um, from from my point of view, that that's that's an extension to what I'm talking about, right? I just want to make sure that we have these things, that we keep it in mind, especially we open source software developers, uh, keep it in mind, and that that organization, like a governing body for for all that work, would be nice to have really coming up with a foundation that raises money to train open source models uh, might be a good idea. May maybe it helps. Yes. Uh, so for the video taping, the it's not taping anymore anyway, uh, repeat, uh, there was a comment from the audience um, that one of these organizations or projects could be Instruct Lab, um, which is providing a good infrastructure to train models and, and so on and so on. Is it also providing the compute power to train models? So can I as a developer sign up and get like 16 GPUs for 15 days and do something? Okay, for the recording, the person is nodding. It looks like Instruct Lab might also uh, provide a little bit of GPU power. That, yeah, exactly. So uh, that, that, that is a good approach, right? And we need projects like that, that not only support the software development itself, but also the training. Because as uh, we had earlier, training models is the most expensive uh, part of the whole thing. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Another comment. Another another comment uh, from from the audience. Uh, uh, absolutely right. Instruct Lab is focusing on the fine tuning of foundation models. Um, I think there was an Instruct Lab, or there will be an Instruct Lab uh, session, maybe later tomorrow. I can't remember. You are doing it? No, no. You? <laughs> ah, yeah. Okay. Nice. So, open source will save us, obviously. Uh, another talk today, tomorrow, one fifteen, thirteen fifteen. 13, 15. Uh, so, ask him. Christian is happy to take all your questions. We're, we're out of budget, question budget. Uh, you had something? You had something, right. Sorry.
<laughs> Good. <laughs> Yes. Did you read my slides before? No. Okay, good. <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay, so a comment was, um, if we are looking at uh, bias or fairness, um, do we have a cultural aspect to fairness? Uh, I think the answer is obvious. Uh, we're going to come back to that later, uh, hopefully. Yes. Um, Good comment. The, the question uh, uh, that we just heard, the answer should be uh, uh, open source and transparency. I do not agree. I, I, I think it's not far enough, right? So, accountability. Just like. Uh, come on! <laughs> I, it's the first time somebody's hearing what I'm saying. <laughs> Oh, that's Marcel. Of course, that, that's the power of open source, right? So, question was, um, uh, what was your question? So, we are not able to train, uh, to train these large language models. We are not able to inspect them in a very good way. Uh, there, m there might be techniques to inspect them. Uh, yes, very true. Um, how, how can we ensure these uh, guardrails or how can we ensure our, our, our targets of uh, doing no harm? Uh, that's a good question. Again, um, if we need hundreds of millions of dollars to train one of these things, Somebody invested. That that talks to the last point, right? Um, uh, um, accountability. Somebody invested that money. Is he accountable? He, she, it, the organization accountable for the results of the large language model that they created in some way? If I base my work on make the decision that every second person is not allowed to be in this uh, meeting, are they responsible for it? Uh, I, d I don't know. It, it's a complex topic. and. I think uh, most of the um, aspects really aggregate on a very high level. So it's not just about technical stuff, not just about inspecting a model. It is really how do I handle all that stuff. Questions? Sally? Question? No? Thank you. Um <laughs> <laughs> so one uh, way to handle all that stuff is obviously regulatory frameworks, right? Uh, we can ask the European Union or individual countries to regulate on that stuff. Um, you might have seen there's an, like a an, like an heated discussion. Uh, shall we consider AI as nuclear weapons? Uh, is everybody allowed to do AI? That's like, okay, that's maybe a little bit of too much of a regulatory framework that you're proposing. But regulatory frameworks are required from, from my point of view. Because we need to tell organizations, companies, orga um, how to how to uh, how to handle all that stuff. Uh, we we need to make it mandatory that an AI system that is driving a car is 
preventing harm from other people on other vehicles. I think we talked about vehicles before. So w we need to have some kind of regulatory frameworks. Um, do they do the whole job? Do they really lead to a good result? I don't think so, because it's just a regulatory framework. Every framework can be exploited. Is it, is it obvious? Yes. Uh, it will happen? Yes. Um, so just the regulatory frameworks are not good enough. Um, one example is the uh, European Union's AI Act, uh, which is pretty precise on the levels of AI that they are talking about, pretty precise what is good, what is not good. It has a cultural aspect that is why it is a European Union uh, AI Act and not a global AI Act. And that is exactly what we, uh, we need to extend on uh, later on. Um, Regulatory frameworks in an in a cultural context. Uh, that that I think that is one of my conclusions. Need to have a look at the slides later on. Um, so um, the the third aspect uh, on on regulatory frameworks is um, open source communities need to be involved somehow. From my point of view, right? We have a certain DNA. Uh, we work in a certain way. We include people. We are open. We are transparent. So that's what uh, we heard earlier, right? Uh, open source might save us. Um, but from my point of view, it's not catching far enough. Um, it's not just because open source and open models, everything is good. It is the way how open source community work with, with each other and within the communities. It's, a, it's an attitude to create stuff. That is the most important. Um, because we can't leave all that stuff to the big tech uh, companies, right? Um, if you if you would like to uh, learn more about Sarah Connor and the big tech company, um, she was working with. Let's put it that way. It's not good. Read up on Sarah Connor. Um, ethical guidelines, and that again circles back to we cannot leave all that stuff to one organization. We cannot leave all that stuff to the European Union or the English Crown. Um, there is certain aspects which have a very, very hard cultural connotation. Um, ethical aspects might be influenced uh, um, from, from religion, from, from the society around you. That's all stuff that we need to integrate somehow. Um, I don't know how, so I'm, I'm just like always, just say everything is bad and leave the stage. Uh, but, but that is something that we need to work on, right? If, if we don't agree that all people are included in creating AI, we cannot say, okay, our ethical guidelines cover them all. This model is appropriate for everybody in the world. That is what's just happening, right? Open AI, all these llamas, all these chat GPTs, they are supposed to be okay for the whole world. Doesn't work out from my point of view. Um, again, that is why I think we should anticipate a lot of these free and open source software community behaviors. Will it save us? No, open source will not save us. <laughs> so um, I'm going to leave out the case studies. As I said, don't read my slides. Uh, download them, read them later. Um, healthcare is pretty interesting because uh, some of the papers came up with the term of augmented intelligence. I don't know which way that works, if the computer is augmenting my intelligence or if I try to augment the computer's intelligence, don't know. Uh, but they have an uh, interesting point of view, right? Because ultimately they're going to kill people if they don't work out in a correct way. So very interesting uh, topic in the healthcare uh, sector. Uh, same for the autonomous vehicles. Um, they are like a, like a less dangerous version of drones. Drones take decisions, kill decisions on their own. Vehicles shouldn't do that uh, also, right? So, uh, all interesting. Everything that is autonomous, everything that has a certain mass and velocity is kind of dangerous to us. Let's have a close look at how um, AI is used in these areas. Um, you see I put some, some links in there if you want to read on. Go ahead. Uh, challenges. Um, I am speeding up, so there were too many questions. It was too interactive uh, from... <laughs> So <laughs> I, I give it a little bit of speed. Um, I think the, the challenges uh, have been discussed here uh, earlier, right? Um, we need to make sure that we include everybody. We need to make sure that 
something is fair, reacting uh, or predicting in a fair way. Uh, what does fairness mean to us? Um, how do we measure the fairness? Is it just by looking at a certain set of attributes like, like size or tallness, uh, hair color and stuff like that? H how do we do that? And that is something that we need to work on uh, as communities. Um, don't leave it to the big techs. Uh, if they say that fairness is just made out of uh, the gender and the color of the hair, that's not good enough. I mean, obviously, look at your data. It, it's not good enough. Well, maybe it works out for Europe, but not the rest of the world, right? Um, trust the AI. I mentioned that before. We are trying to get a grip on that one, right? Uh, we are trying to get um, a little bit of uh, transparency, a little bit of explainability, a little bit, uh, not accountability, that, that's too far reached, but a little bit of bias detection. We are trying to figure out, is the data drifting? So do we still take the right uh, and the accurate data into account if we are making decisions? Stuff like that is handled by the, uh, or developed in the trusty AI community. Uh, and we should uh, keep in mind that all that stuff is evolving in a very, very rapid way, right? Uh, in, in, in the past, I don't know, four or five years, um, we have seen the, the rise of all these GPUs from NVIDIA and IBM and uh, AMD, um, and it's getting faster and faster and faster, and people are coming up with more and more and more ideas and experimenting more and more and more. So there's an rapidly evolving mass of AI related work that is going on and if that somehow slips into an unregulated, into an unmonitored by us, the people, unmonitored a way, that is problematic. So not only the, the communities need to keep up to date, uh, which is kind of working out from my point of view, but also the regulatory bodies need to keep up to speed. And that is what worries me a little bit more. Um, if all the states in the European Union come to a conclusion and need to update their conclusion, that can take a little bit of time. I don't know if you have observed that, but most of the stuff in the European Union takes a little bit of time. Uh, that's not really good for the AI age. Oh. Yeah, so uh, the question is basically, um, uh, or the comment is, uh, a lot of stuff that I'm talking about sounds like we are raising our children. Can't we learn from that? Yeah, maybe we can learn from it. I mean, one of the techniques uh, in uh, AI is supervised learning. So I, as a human, observe how that thing tries to learn something. And I correct it and I say, no, 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 don't hit the wall all the time. Please, you're supposed to be a car. Don't hit the wall. So, so we are teaching it by, by supervising and by, by reinforcement learning and stuff like that. That's <laughs> no. Yeah, but exactly. That is very much inspired by raising a child. And also, the, the I don't know, for the legal part, I don't know if that is a good thing. That is more like trial and error, right? If you, if you Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's a Exactly. So, so it, it's a good comment uh, we, we should explore on. Uh, what, what can we learn from raising child in our society and adapt it to the AI? Yes, good point.
Exactly. Another longish comment from the audience. Uh, thanks for that one. Uh, how are you going to build trust um, in, in, in smaller societies, right? It, it's not about at society level, but in smaller group of people. Uh, how it evolves, how it erodes. Uh, and, and, and one of the important aspects here is uh, do act people intentionally, unintentionally to create or erode trust in, in that smaller society. Thanks for that. I'm going to have a look at my slides, what's happening next, because I need to push a little bit on the time. Um, so um, coming back to the English Empire, that uh, comment came from over here somehow. Um, yes, that is exactly what we need to do. If we are talking about fairness, let's, let's be consistent, globally consistent. We need to think about all these people. Again, from my point of view, that is a behavior that we have seen in open source communities for quite some time now be inclusive, be respectful, all that stuff needs to be applied to the AI uh, or the creation of AI uh, systems. Um, same for uh, harmonization. Th that is also something that is quite natural, right? We cannot have one part of the world moving full steam ahead, ignoring all of that other stuff, and the other part of the world is trying to regulate the crap out of the system. That's not going to work. So we should move forward in a very harmonized, very, very, at least open and communication way. Let's see, <laughs> too many slides, too many slides. Um, I talked about that one uh, before, right? We need to make sure um, that, uh, that uh, AI systems stay explainable, that we can have a look at them, that we can audit them. Um, transparency is the key here. Um, trust the AI community is working on that one. Any, uh, that's for me the important part here. Anyone disagrees on that one? Or, uh, or is that question too complicated? I, I think you got the point, right? Be good open source citizens even though you are heading over to the AI world. You didn't hear me talking about innovation, right? Uh, at least not quite a lot. And if you are better at remembering slide titles as I am, you remember that the talk is about balancing innovation and uh, guardrails and stuff like that. So it is kind of a complicated um, or delicate uh, balance, right? Um, some people want to do whatever is possible with all the technology. Is it good for all of us? I don't know. Let's have an opinion. Let's create an opinion on that one. We need to figure out what the balance is. And we need to learn from a lot of other uh, areas. You're, you're a psychologist or what? Compu okay, so here we go. Um, they can give us good inspirations. If you're a computer science person mixing that up with uh, psychology, good. Um, is, it, is it a question? You're doing good. Mm. 
Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. One administrative comment. I'm going to leave the stage now. I'm going to run. Let's have that discussion because I think it's very important. That is what we need to do. And I think we have, we open source people have the, commu uh, the, 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 the methods and the, the openness to work on that stuff. Yes, not everything can be harmonized on a global level because there's too many local problems that need to be solved also. Absolutely agree. Uh, there was another comment somewhere down here. Let's keep that outside, uh, to the outside. Uh, thanks. Uh, I have recorded 16 questions. That was great. So thank you very much for that. <laughs> thanks.